Despite a tough weekend in Kansas City, the Guardians are still on top of the American League Central, just like we all predicted. You are Locked On MLB, your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade now, and I am now in my sixth full season here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where I'm doing double duty. I'm hosting Locked On MLB five days a week, and I'm also hosting Locked On A's five days a week. Why? Because I'm not sane. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as the playoffs wind down and they're winded down and they've already wound down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. For this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everybody every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to get started. Follow us at Lockdown and MLB Pods on Twitter or whatever it's called now. And on Instagram, I am your pal Sully, but Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Well, I am not flying today solo. I am bringing in the host of the man whose team is uh, suddenly have images of winning an American League pennant dancing in their head. It's friend of the show. It's Justin Lada of Locked On Guardians. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Could have been a better weekend on the field for the Guardians, but hey, life is pretty good when you're in first place. You lose three or four, and you're still six and a half, seven games up in the standings. And we'll talk about this in the first segment that uh, before we go, you know, de- delve, delve and dive headfirst into Guardians baseball, this American League Central, which I thought was going to be a big pile of nothing, has suddenly become a very, very competitive series. So they, you know, competitive uh, division. Um, hey, uh, before we get going, let's do the trivia question. And the trivia question is this. I lost it for a second. Um, There have been several players, like the late Orlando Cepeda, who played for both the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's. Orlando Cepeda played three games for the 1972 Oakland A's. Um, Who and that there have been many who play on both teams that are in the Hall of Fame, but only one pitcher has pitched with both the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's and are currently enshrined in the Hall of Fame. Justin Lotta, do you know who it is? The only name that came to mind was Vita Blue, but I'm sure that's and, wrong. No, we got a bunch of answers for Vita Blue, and that's a tremendous guess. He became the first person to start the All-Star game from both leagues, but he's not in the Hall of Fame. The correct answer is and uh mark sujian got it in fact mark sujian uh gave me the idea for today for today's trivia question so i'll give uh i'll give credit where credit's due when i give the trivia question at the end that's based on a comment he made uh the answer is rich gossage the goose at the end of his career played for a new team every week and the his hall of fame uh plaque is kind of sort of cluttered by the end <laughs> mainly remember for his time with the yankees and with san diego he p- actually played a uh, many many years with chicago white Sox, one year with the pirates and then bounced around between the cubs the giants he went to japan went back to the yankees went to the a's went to the rangers and finished his career with the seattle mariners as we all remember beloved mariner legend Rich Gossage. But yes, he is the only pitcher to have pitched with the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's. So there you go. There you go. But Justin, you're not here to talk about Rich Gossage. Um, We went into this year knowing that the Chicago White Sox were going to be a big pile of awful. Um, I actually picked the Detroit Tigers to win the division. And my mindset was this. Somebody had to. The collective bargaining agreement uh, made it clear that the Central needed a representative. And I threw my hands up in the air and I said, so I want out the Tigers. Well, 
it turns out there are three legit contenders in here. And so tell, give me your thoughts before we go into the fact that, you know, despite the fact that today's loss has cut the lead down to six games over Kansas City, um, they went into the last day of June with a weak buffer, not weak W-E-A-K, weak W-E-E-K buffer. Uh, tell me your thoughts about the American League Central and why they're better than we thought they were going to be. Well, I, I, like you, came in and had nobody in mind who could run away with this thing. I even joked, I said, the first 85 wins gets to go to the playoffs, and that's where the mm-hmm. race ends for the American League Central. But, no, they've been better. The Twins have been better this year than they were a year ago, better than I thought they'd be, even though they've had some bumps. The Royals, hey, they went out and they spent a bunch of money in the offseason. Seth Lugo's been good. Waka's been good. Uh, Hunter Renfro has been their best outfielder, so credit to them. They've, they've you know, Cole Reagans is awesome. Salvador Perez is going to be an all-star again. Good for him. I've always enjoyed watching him play uh, against anybody but the Guardians. Yeah. And then Cleveland, they've got the best bullpen in baseball, which was not really expected based on what happened last year, based on the fact they lost their setup man to Tommy John. Their offense is hitting more home runs this year, which we all didn't expect. And, of course, they don't have you know Shane Bieber or they haven't had Gavin Williams until this week. So, yeah, I, the Guardians have confused us all, but uh, hey, a good bullpen goes a long way. I think was it Bob Feller's expression said the two or who whose expression was it? The a pitcher's two best friends, and one of them is a bullpen. Um, it sounds like something Feller would say. Um, let me just I'll, I'm going to go back to one of the other contenders this year. I think a big thing that's helped Minnesota. Remember, Minnesota not only won the division last year, but uh, actually not only won a playoff game for the first time since the 04 election, but the uh, but they actually advanced. And they actually, they gave the Astros a, a little bit of trouble. I mean, they they split the first two games at Houston. Um, former Astro Carlos Correa having a bounce back season, playing like the star they thought they were getting, I think is a reason why they've held steady. Um, they've been just getting flat, you know, and the fact that Byron Buxton has played better recently, you know, played in the way that they thought they would. The And they've been getting some very good pitching recently. Bailey Ober, who his overall record is okay, but recently has pitched quite well, thank you very much. Joe Ryan and Pablo Lopez have also had some very good outings. And uh, Samantha Woods Richardson, who needs to just narrow it down to two names at this point. Um, uh, and also uh, the fact that the Twins have a pitcher named Cody Funderburk, who is a, a great pick, a great, great player to try to say their name if you're a little tipsy and avoid the uh, the MA rating. But I do, th- and and Duran has pitched well out of the bullpen. Jax has pitched well out of the bullpen. Akala has pitched well out of the bullpen. The Twins uh, have shown a pretty decent amount of depth across the board to so they can, as they, um, they would like to defend their division title. I, I think I picked the Twins coming into the year just based on the fact they had the best starting rotation in the division, mm-hmm. the most the most likely one to turn out. Although the Tigers, I mean, to be fair to your pick, Sully, yeah. the Tigers, Tariq skubal has been great. Jack Flaherty's been great. Their pitching staff's incredible. They just can't hit anything, which is unbelievable. Yeah, I, I had Colt Keith as someone pegged as a rookie of the year candidate this year. It hasn't panned out. But, yeah, Duran Duran's hit some, some bumps in the road, and so has Pablo Lopez. But, yeah. Richards or Woods Richardson's awesome. Ober's great. And uh, I've always liked Joe Ryan. And hey, they got a good old friend from Cleveland, Carlos Santana, who I can never root against. All right. By the way, um, I knew the Royals were going to be a little bit better this year. Remember, they lost 100 some odd games last year. And I thought, well, you know, an improvement for them would be to be an 85 loss team. That in itself would be at least a 15 game improvement, which anyone would take. But the fact of the matter is they're playing like a team that wants to have a winning record this year. And I think no small part of it is, well, uh, they have one of the most intriguing battles for the American league's all-star team is the fella in Baltimore or the fella in Kansas city at shortstop. And Bobby Witt jr. Has played exactly the way you would want a future superstar to play and I think he has ignited that team and has has reinvigorated Salvador Perez, who you managed to face against uh, your boys. You know, hit that buzzsaw of Salvador Perez. And who picked Seth Lugo as being the best offseason acquisition? 
Holy cow, he's in the Cy Young conversation. There are people who think he might even start the All-Star game. I'm not sure who will start the All-Star game for the American League, but he's at least in the conversation for that as well. Can't get much better than that when it comes to free agent dollars. I've always liked Lugo, to be honest. I, I didn't know what to expect from him for a full season, but this is as good as he's ever looked to me. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I I admire I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit because the rays of heaven are coming right in and this is not a this is not an Angels podcast. But uh I like the signing of Lugo. I like the signing of Michael Waka. I like the signing bring, making sure Renfro was there and making sure that they had some uh, uh veterans on there. But I didn't expect them to all click the way that they have been. This has been the Royals have been they're, they're a legitimate playoff team, and I give them a ton of credit because they slumped for a while. They let Boston catch them for about an hour and a half, and they dusted themselves off and came right back. And every year you see a team look pretty good through June that you're not expecting, but then they start to wet the bed. At the end of the year, they're going, oh, yeah, that, that 86 loss team. You remember they had a playoff spot in June? Yeah, I totally forgot about that. But the Royals, uh, the Royals – have righted the ship and I give a lot of credit to uh uh I you know what I I I got to be 100% honest with you for a minute there um I I still thought Matheny was the manager uh I you know I I completely uh forgot that uh Quattraro was the manager of the team uh, until I looked at baseballreference.com and seen worst website in the history of the planet earth but well look at when we come back we're going to talk a little bit about the team that the Royals beat this weekend, who also just happened to be the first place Cleveland Guardians, who are thinking, yeah, 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 the division is nice, but uh, we want to win something a little more. You know, I'm telling you something, Justin. Just a few weeks ago, sports was at its absolute apex. You had Major League Baseball going on. You had the Stanley Cup Finals going on. The Celtics, who I grew up watching, were there. And I talked to my Aunt Mary today in Miami. And do you know what? She said to me, I was up late all night watching the Panthers. They love their hockey in Miami. They love their hockey there. So congratulations, Aunt Mary, on your beloved Panthers winning. But now there's not as many sports out there, Justin, but FanDuel lets me keep on sporting the way I want to. All I have to do is open the app, dream up any bet I can think of. And, you know, I hope some of you put some of your money on Lugo, okay, for building up some stuff and putting in money. By the way, if you're going to vote for the uh, bet on the under for run scored, do that for the A's every time. You'll clean up. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus or a bonus or a boost daily. That's right. There's something for everyone, including you, Justin, every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, do you know what it is? It's the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Hey, Justin, I don't know where your hub is these days. You know, your hub of finding sports news and sports takes. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program to you to bring the biggest sports stories out there. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on the YouTubes or the free Amazon Fire TV channel app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. All right. We're here with Justin Lada of Lockdown Guardians. So the last bunch of years, the whether you call them the Indians or the Guardians, they could pitch, but they could not hit. And so this year they lose Bieber. They're getting disappointing seasons from McKenzie and some of the other pitchers. And what has happened? They've turned into the best hitting team you could imagine. And I'm sure Terry Francona is thinking – why couldn't I have some of those bats in 2022? But Justin, go through a little bit. I talked about this on the show a couple of days ago, but go through from your point of view how this team has turned into, from the, probably for the first time since Travis Hafner was cashing a check, 
has turned into an elite offensive team. It sounds kind of simple. The funny thing is, you mentioned Terry Francona wishes he had some of these guys. He did. There's nobody new in this offense. I'm telling you, it's it's nobody nobody he hasn't had before. It, the philosophy kind of is, let's try to swing the swing the bat harder. They've got a bunch of guys who make a ton of contact, and that really rode them to success in 2022. They put the ball in play. They caused chaos by running the base as well. They played good defense. And when you put the ball in play a ton, sometimes you force teams into errors. That worked for them a lot in 2022, but obviously it wasn't extremely sustainable. And this year, the philosophy has kind of been, well, when you have a chance to hit the ball harder, take it. So if you're up, you know, 2-0 in a count or 1-1 or whatever it is, go out and take a bigger hack than you normally would. If you make contact, you're going to do some damage. And if not, you know, you come back and you got another pitch to play with. That has allowed Stephen Kwan to turn into not just a guy who hits a ton of singles. He's, you know, I know he's at the top of the average leaderboard, but he's also got a ton of slugging this year. He's already set a career high in homers. Josh Naylor is at a career high in homers already. And, you know, it's only the first of July. Jose Ramirez is Jose Ramirez. And they just keep finding different guys in the lineup pretty much every night. Like David Fry had a great month in the month of May. I was going to bring him up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Andres Aminas had a great April. He hasn't been great since. Um, Bo Naylor you know, has had a tough year. He's had a very good month of June. So they've just been really good at finding different guys to step up at different times. So that way, when there's one here in the lineup that, you know, starts to slump or starts to, to go into a funk, somebody else is there to pick them up. And it's nice they have more than one option in the lineup this year than just Jose Ramirez. Yeah, you brought, you brought up something I was going to say, too, is they seem to have, like, I looked up one day, as I keep track of who owns baseball, and I thought, oh, uh, why does it say Bo Naylor? They meant to say Josh Naylor. And I looked, I was like, wait, no, it was Bo. Bo had a big game. Like, you do see there are players who picked him up. Quan has been the, the amazing story to me. I mean, we knew Quan was a good player. We knew Quan was a fine, you know, he he was he could do fine offensively. But he is uh, he's going to win the batting title in case anyone still cares about that once he gets his uh, – at bats going the fact is his ops is is inching towards a thousand at this point and doing so where yes he'll have career highs and homers and he'll probably get double digit maybe finish the year with 15 16 homers which is fine but he is also i mean he's getting solid doubles and he is he's not striking out a lot and he does put the ball in play and I do agree that once a big thing is if you put the ball in play this is the royals one of I almost got us a, uh, an explicit rating there. Won the World Series by having fast runners on the base and putting the ball in play and hoping for some chaos. But the fact that they have right now, they already have two sluggers with 20 homers. They are Naylor and Ramirez cleared 20 home runs before July 1st. Uh, they weren't doing that a couple of years ago. And I just think it has given the team uh, a tremendous facelift. But like that Royals team that won the World Series in 2015, which, by the way, should be a t- kind of team your boys should be emulating, holy cow, once they have the lead after the sixth inning, you're not scoring off of them. Yeah, this bullpen has been incredible. And coming into the year, you know, Manuel Class A led the league in saves in 2023, but he also mm-hmm. led the league in blown saves. And his yeah. ERA was like approaching three, which for a guy who throws 101 mile hour cutters, you're like, how does anybody hit this guy? So, we weren't sure about him coming into the year. Trevor Steffen, who was their main setup guy a year ago, is out with Tommy John. And their second best reliever, I don't know if they have a second best reliever. Like, Cade Smith has had a great year. He was almost not on the team in April. Like, they they broke camp from Arizona, went to Oakland, and they said, hey, you're on the team unless we make some sort of, like, last-minute trade or waiver claim for a reliever, in which case you'll go to AAA. Well, now he can't be sent down because he's just their one of their best relievers. Hunter Gaddis. You know, it was a guy who started for them a couple of years ago. Now he's a great reliever. Yeah. And just hair. I mean, they've got they've got a, a bullpen that's, you know, six or seven guys deep. Well, right now, Class A, Gaddis, uh, Smith, and Heron all have ERAs under two out of the bullpen. And Avila and and Hentage. I'm sorry. Hench am, am I saying Henches, right? You want to say Pat Henkin, don't you? No, it's Henches. <laughs> I know. I, I, I found myself <laughs> saying Henkin three front times in a row. I almost did a Beetlejuice there. Um, I mean, he he is your number. He's your six option in the bullpen. Scott Barlow, whose ERA is under four, is basically your mop up man at this point. I mean, you're looking at this teams. The the they can hit with anybody. 
and they can hit intelligently with anybody with a lot of depth. And their bullpen is outrageous. And Class A may be having his best season yet. He is 30, going in today with 39 strikeouts and four walks in 38 and a third innings. He's let up three runs, and that includes a homer. I mean, he is, I mean, Kenley Jansen lets up three runs uh, a, every other day. Why is the sun coming in here like this? It's like I gotta keep <laughs> gotta keep turning this. I'm I'm in heaven right now. Oh, the skylight. There's I'm, I'm right above the skylight. I gotta keep this is sundial. I gotta be a sundial here. I don't want the sun hitting the thing there. Um, all right, but so but go tell me your thoughts on the rotation. <laughs> They're not good ones. It's it's Tanner Bybee. Well, the old saying used to be what spawn and sane and pray for rain for Cleveland. It's yeah. uh, it's Bybee. Lively sometimes, most times, and then everybody else, you know, you're hoping they pull a rabbit out of the hat. Lively, Lively's been a good addition, but, um, yeah. you know, he's really best if he's your third or fourth best starter. Bybee stepped up as the ace, and, and right now, they'll get Gavin Williams back this week. They just sent Kristen McKenzie back to AAA because he's leading the league at home runs and walks, which is always a good combination when you're a pitcher, right? That's what you want to lead the league in. Um, so yeah. they're going to need to make some sort of move at the deadline for a starting pitcher. Well, that is going to lead us to our final segment here. Uh, when we come back, Justin and I are going to be talking about trade deadlines coming up in just a couple of weeks. And if Cleveland wants to do more than just be a team that showed up, uh, now's the time for them to think about a big, big move. So before we get there, we got to talk about our friends over at Price Picks. This is the America's number one daily fantasy sports app, over 5 million active members. And you can now up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. So you can go ahead and put $10 in and turn that into $1,000 if you make the right picks. Uh, for the Guardians this week, they're playing the White Sox. The White Sox are not any good. We've talked about that, Sully, but you want to know what? The, they've given the Guardians problems all year. It's been a very tough series. The last time these two played, the Guardians really struggled against them. They're going to miss Garrett Crochet, who missed a ton of bats on Sunday, but the Guardians are getting uh, some weaker spots on the schedule in their rotation, getting Gavin Williams back. I would look at the pitcher score for Gavin Williams, his first game back. This should be an offense. He dominates. And then Carlos Carrasco has been better his last time, a couple times out against the White Sox. That could be good. But Eric Fetty has been tough on the Guardians. So look at some of the hitter game scores, probably you know take less on some of those uh, game scores as well for those hitters. If any of this sounds good to you, Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That is code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. And with Prize Picks, you know it is pick more, pick less. It is that easy. Now, there's something you should know, Justin, that we here at Locked On MLB pride ourselves in how we cover Major League Baseball all year long. And I've now been doing this, this is my sixth full season of doing this. And we cover everything. We cover the draft. We cover the spring training. We cover predictions. We cover the Hall of Fame, the playoffs. It's year-round. But what else is year-round is collection seasons. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after you for unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, seize your properties. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. Look, at, I've had a bunch of times I've worked for media companies and tech companies where some of the smaller ones, they'll pay you with a personal check or just give you a check and not take any of the taxes out. Or you get a 1099. And by the time April 15th comes around, if you don't handle it right, you're going to be clobbered come April 15th. You need people like the good folks at Tax Network USA to do their job. And with over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over a billion dollars in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally at that parlay this season, you need to help file it correctly, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. Be sure to mention Locked On MLB at checkout. You'll receive $250 discount of their services. Tax Network USA, let them go to bat for you. Hey, this is a reminder that Locked On has created the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channel app. 
Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day. With local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channel app. All right, wrapping up things here with Justin Lotta of Locked On Guardians. I've been saying the Guardians have to say to hell with thinking of the future. If they have to let go of maybe, I'm not saying empty the cupboard, but if it means loosening up the grip on one prospect or two to bring in um, Quantrill, to bring in Flaherty, to bring in, they should be in on whomever is a big pitcher out there. I'm not saying send your top prospect for him. But I am saying, don't say, well, we, we don't cheap out. Don't do what Baltimore did last year. And that is cling on to all their prospects, even though they had a glaring need. That glaring need came to bite them in the butt in the postseason. And next thing you know, everybody, including you, forgot they were in the playoffs last year. The seas have opened up so Cleveland could have a potential, and say it with me, folks, pennant winner. So instead of thinking about, well, this guy's going to be a great third baseman in 2028, 2024 could be that year that people have been waiting for since Satchel Page was a rookie. So <laughs> I, I, I think they have to be aggressive, and I don't think they can be overly precious with their prospects. Uh, tell me what you think. Well, first of all, I'm laughing you said Cal Quantrill because they gave him away for next to nothing in the offseason. He was – a salary dump. They sent it up to, to Colorado get for him back. a double A catcher. I know, I know. I don't get know what back. it's gonna cost to get him now. It's unbelievable. Yeah, they sure could use him right now. Look, the rental pricing, the price is for pretty on mid market to be expensive, whether it's a work cost. Guardians definitely I agree with you. They should not clutch their pearls a little too much in terms of prospect. Be aggressive. You don't get to choose when your window. You might think that oh, we can with our starting pitchers, at least for them. Well, you broke up there a little bit. I don't know what's happening in the connection. You broke when up they made the trade you... for Andrew Miller, yeah, from the Yankees in 2016, I was I was very on the edge about trading Clint Frazier for him, and that trade ended up being great. Right, Clint yeah. Frazier's an in indie ball now. Uh, Justice Sheffield is in the minors. The other three players they trade were in the minors. It's okay to trade the prospects. Like you said, don't go out and give your top prospect for fifth best rental pitcher on the market, right? But go out and make a deal for something you need right now. You can always rebuild your farm system. The Guardians have the first overall pick in the draft next month yeah. or this yeah. month. Gosh, it's July. They have the first overall pick in the draft. They have money to spend in the draft. They could make a trade at the end of the month and have their farm system totally rebuilt by the draft alone, this is a very unique opportunity. How many teams can say they were in first place and we have a chance to go for a World Series and also we're picking number one in the draft? How often does that happen? Which means they can replenish one of their top picks right away that they can sacrifice. They will. I mean, think about when Cliff Lee was traded from Cleveland to Philadelphia, Philadelphia to Seattle, Seattle to Texas. Virtually none of those prospects panned out. One or two did along the way, but not many. I mean, the players who were acquired for Roy Halladay, the players who were acquired for CC Sabathia, the players who were all the different trades that David Price went through, maybe one or two major leaguers came from that. But most of the one time, they turn out to be, yeah, but, but most of them turn out to be to amount to, to nothing. I, I'm always willing. Yes, everyone talks about, oh, you know, the Tigers gave up on John Smoltz. The Red Sox gave up on Jeff Bagwell. The Philadelphia Phillies gave up on Ryan Sandberg. We remember those because they're so rare. They are so rare. And, you know, when the when the Braves needed to get Fred McGriff, oh, my God, they have to give up Melvin Nieves. Remember, what is your favorite Melvin Nieves highlight? Remember bouncing your kid on your knee talking about the great moments of Melvin Nieves. I'm sorry. You have a window of opportunity to win a World Series. Look at Kansas City a, a bunch of years ago. Saw that window open up. And they sacrificed a couple of prospects to bring in the likes of you know Johnny Cueto and a couple other players to solidify that. They won the World Series and the window slammed shut. You don't know when the window is going to be open like this. And it's open for Cleveland. and. I don't know if you know this or not, 
but they there's been a World Series champion in Milwaukee more recently than there has been in Cleveland. Just stop and think about that for a second. That hurts so, a little. Yeah, that hurts a little. Well, yeah, the best way to do that <laughs> is to close up that loophole. So this is a chance. This is a chance to, to let's feel the dream of this and ease their pain. Go the distance. Real, there you go. real quickly, you made a great point right there. Over, over, over. Look, look at the Guardians and the Royals. They faced Cole Reagans the other day, right? The Rangers mm-hmm. would love to have Cole Reagans back right now. He's the Royals' ace. But you want to know what? They won the World Series a year ago by trading him for Roldis Chapman. So does that hurt a little bit? Maybe, but they won the World Series. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, that, it happens sometimes. Sometimes a team, sometimes more than one team, can benefit from a trade. All right, Justin, tell me what you think is going to happen. Give me your – got about half the season left. You think Cleveland's going to win the division, and do you think they're going to get that first buy or going to get the buy of the wild card series? I do think they're going to win the division. I don't know. Well, yeah, they're going to be better than the Mariners, I think. So I think they'll get a first-round buy. It, someone from the AL East will obviously be there as well. I think they can outlast the Mariners or if the Astros come on strong late. I think they can hang on to at least the second number, the second seed in the AL. All right. I think they're going to as well. Um, we'll see. I'm not I'm not counting out Houston. I'm not counting Houston in that division. Uh there's half a season to go, and uh Seattle has yet to put on the aft thrusters, and that makes me nervous. All right, Justin Lotta, tell people where they can listen to your terrific show. Every day on YouTube where you get podcasts, we are available covering the Guardians every day. We've got draft coverage, visual coverage, prospect coverage. All right, we stuff coming up with the draft being two weeks away in the Guardian. Okay, we had a little tiny little hiccup there, but we were back on. And uh, by the way, here's the here's a trivia question. Mark uh, Sujian, uh, Su- Sujian recommended uh, Mark. If I mispronounce your name, I'm sorry, but he recommended this trivia question. Uh, we recently lost both Willie Mays and Orlando Cepeda. What Hall of Famer gave up the final hits to both Willie Mays and Orlando Cepeda? Not in the same game, but the last hit of Willie Mays' career and the last hit of Orlando Cepeda's career were both off the same Hall of Fame pitcher. That's your trivia question. Put it down in the comments. Follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram. I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. You got a double dip of me. Check out Locked on A's. Talking about the Guardians and are they going to be playing in October and how deep will they go? And the BGs asked us all, how deep is your love? He is Justin Lotta of Locked On Guardians. I'm your pal Sully. This has been Locked On MLB. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.